The third round of the barrel brawl is upon us. First year USL League One clubs won Knoxville and Lexington square off at Regal Stadium tonight brought to you by KUB Fiber. The border rivals taking themselves on for the third time this season, the latest iteration of their rivalry. Good evening, everybody. Jack Edwards with you on the broadcast. Delighted to be here as both teams prepare for a late season playoff push, trying to be first year clubs to get into the playoffs. Look at the standings entering into today brought to you by PY. You can see in seventh place, just on the bottom of that playoff line behind Greenville is one Knoxville and in 10th, Lexington. Lexington with back-to-back -back wins have pushed themselves up a little bit up the table. Still, three points for either side in this rivalry match would go a long way in helping them get closer to that 32-point line where Greenville sit at the bottom of the playoffs. Both teams trying to have a late push. The players key to it first off for the hosts, Jake Keegan. He scored a goal in both of their matches against Lexington so far this season. Leads the team with five. You see the goal there. That one in the 40th minute of their first matchup this season. The first ever points for them as a club early on this season. Back on March 18th, the second one would be the equalizer in their second meeting, a draw later on in the season. Vital goals for them all throughout the year, especially in these matches against Lexington. A player he's had to go up against multiple times, Tate Robertson. He's in fantastic form. Two goals, two assists across his last two matches. Some excellent free kick delivery. So the assist, now the goal with that one just across for Northern Colorado. An excellent player, now playing in the right mid position for Lexington. Was playing as a left back, a right back at times. Head coach Sam Sockley saying his football and IQ incredible and able to play in multiple spots. When he can take free kicks like that, he's an asset anywhere across the pitch. Going to be a great one between Lexington and Knoxville. Some interesting tweaks into the 11. We'll break that down for you in the barrel brawl here. A lovely Friday night action on USL League One. On the other side, one Knoxville and Lexington. Are you ready? Ready for more of the game you love. Ready for more players and more teams. Ready for more stadiums, for more fans in more cities. This is a different league. The USL Super League. Built for the future of women's soccer. Bridging the journey from youth to pro, connected to the global game, and bringing it all closer to home. Are you ready? be honest most of us aren't going to be professional athletes but if your goal is to finish your degree we can help come to a university that puts your goals first Bellevue University your partner in finishing goals Attacker now cutting towards the box, fires a shot, and the Whites are on the board first. Toomey with a cross, pitch in! Hernandez off the feed, and San Diego is right back in. Plays the delivery right in. Two more in. New Mexico takes the lead. Place. Just on the bottom of that playoff line behind Greenville is one Knoxville and in 10th Lexington. Lexington with back-to-back -back wins have pushed themselves up a little bit up the table. Still, three points for either side in this rivalry match would go a long way in helping them get closer to that 32-point. Let's look back on the last matchups of the barrel brawl between these two sides. The first matchup this season for both teams was first-year clubs taking each other on in Knoxville. This one, a pair of penalties. You see the first professional goals for either side. And whipped into the box, it's going to be Jake Keegan. You saw it in the open. That was the winner. A 2-1 win headed their way on March 18th. Now May 27th, Nico Brown opened the scoring with a late 
first half goal in the 43rd minute, and then Jake Keegan, the equalizer, as you saw again. He's got two goals in two matches against Lexington. Now, the starting lineups for today for one Knox for Mark McKeever. One change for them. It's suspension based. Jordan Skelton out due to red card or yellow card accumulation, I should say. Rudy Castro is in. It's going to lead to a shift of personnel. Frank Ross might be filling that left wing back spot while Derek Waldeck drops into the back three. We will see how that plays out through the full 90. Keep you apprised of how that looks. Very similar look, though, for Lexington under Sam Stockley. They found a lot of comfort in this 4 4 2 formation. Tariq Muhammad at left back. Owen Green at right back. You're seeing Tate Robertson up now at the right mid spot, having some great form there. Mentioned it in the open as well. A guy who can be flexed around the pitch, allows for some rotation. A Tez Diouf out of the 11 in Will Bainham in the front partnership with Nico Brown, trying to bring himself into the goal scoring form. One goal in the year for the Australian, while Nico Brown with seven up front. But you can see Regal Soccer Stadium and the two sides preparing for their third meeting of the Barrel Brawl. Should be a fascinating one between these two sides. The blue navy jerseys are one Knoxville. And then the greens are Lexington Sporting Club. And the final iteration of the Barrel Brawl is underway with one Knoxville heading from left to right to get us going. An early header by Tate Robertson. Knocked back for Derek Waldeck. Don Smart has passed forward. Intercepted by Chrysler. The big player to watch out for tactically, both Angelo Kelly Rosales, who you see collecting the ball right now, as well as Derek Waldeck. Well, how they get shifted around for one knocks will be telling and what it's going to actually look like because with the suspension of Jordan Skelton, it's forcing Mark McKeever with a limited 11, a limited selection to rotate things around. Jack Edwards here with you for the battle brawl. Should be a very fun one between these two sides. Bit of chippiness, bit of rivalry developing. You saw on social media the two teams trading jabs to develop a bit of understanding and mutual mutual love not the right word but understanding of one another and this is the second year for one knoxville overall as a club they were usl league one league two side i should say last year in 2022 with mark mckeever at the helm then as for lexington they are a brand new side to this and both teams have been experiencing the ups and downs as this one's lofted forward. Flicked on. Foul committed, though, in the process. Our head referee, Christian Campo Hernandez, dinging Nico Brown for a foul there. As Chris is feeling the effects of that one. As Chris gets back to his feet, we can dive into things a bit further here as well as you see the injury report brought to you by orthopedic surgeons university orthopedic surgeons that is not reported for either side but both a bit limited with knocks that you'll get throughout this point of the season but generally the fitness beginning to improve for both sides john lewis spraying one forward made eight saves last time out just a massive performance for them against forward madison on the road to pick up three points but knocked out of play. Last touching, Kalikstro. Gio Kalikstro knocking that one out. Muhammad tosses that one in. Knocked out of play. Last touching, Nico Brown. Noah Tez Diouf has brought Bainham back into the 11. We'll see how they handle the loss of Diouf. He's a player who's got nine goals on the year, been in some great form goal scoring wise recently. But a, a late scratch for this one. Not listed on the injury report, but not available in the squad altogether. So something limiting them from young Senegalese forward. Switch of play headed away by Green. Nodded back in. Keegan. Has it taken off of him. Nico Brown trying to get past his opponent. Nods the ball away. Referee will judge that to be a foul. Just about the halfway line. Opportunity for Lexington to recollect possession. You 
can see Callum Johnson on your screen. He was not listed as part of the starting 11, but has been brought in. So we'll get you confirmation of how that has shuffled things around for Knoxville. As we're back in play. See how Gonzalez try to pass forward, but just off. Lewis spraying this one forward. Kleekstro left for it, but it went over his head. That one will just wide for a goal kick. Sean Lewis, we mentioned him a little bit a moment ago, making his 20th start of the year. Rockford, Michigan native. He had a lot of experience in the USL Championship, NFC, FC Tulsa. He was traded last year to the Indy 11, made six appearances for them. He also had time in Austria. I'm talking to Mark McKeever ahead of this one, just bringing experience for a team that doesn't have a ton of it at the professional level, at least built in at the club. It was important to acquire players like him who's got the shot stopping capabilities that he has, making eight saves last time out, was big in that win against forward Madison. There's a lot of drama in that one. There were two goals disallowed early for Madison for offsides. Second one being incredibly harsh, looked to be from every angle that it was actually onside. But Mark McKeever again saying the, the fortune, it'll, it'll ebb and flow over a full 32-match season as Robertson edges his opponent over. It'll bounce kindly. He'll be able to chase it down. Daniel Fernandez did enough to slide it out of play and tossed back in. Bainham chasing. A little curl. Brilliant touch, though, by Kalikstra to take it away from Muhammad. Too heavy, though. Goes out of play. Toss into the channel for Bainham. Out of play, last touched by Angelo Kelly. Kelly, the 30-year-old Honduran, he leads the league and tackles one. He's just a, a ferocious player, winning the ball up and down the field. At Union Omaha, he was the victim of a two yellow cards, red card in that match. This one whipped into the box, headed away by Chrysler. But he was sent off in that one with two yellow cards, second one being quite light, and in the end is actually rescinded. So he played last time out, even though he was technically red carded two matches ago. Didn't face suspension for that. Calixtro collects, plays it in field. And so kind of the narrative being developed. Some refereeing drama have lingered around Knoxville recently. Shot on target by Illich is caught by Knight. The first sight of goal by Knoxville. The hosts put that one on frame. But tame, one that you'd expect I'm all night to deal with. Illich in the press now. He's a bit too overzealous in that and commits the foul. Seha Gonzalez goes back to his keeper. Knight spraying it forward. A bit of a tug in the back by Chrysler. He was saying his shirt was tugged as well, but the referee blows in favor of the visitors, and Bainham, who was pulled down. Not quite Tate Robertson delivery material, but close enough. Just confirmation for Knoxville. Frank Ross, the player not in the 11. Instead, Johnson, as Bainham chests that down and passes it out. So a swap from the initially reported 11s. Muhammad whips, whips that in with the right foot, headed away by Chrysler. Halamini, nice touchdown, plays it in. Brown, shot on target, saved well by Sean Lewis. Had to get down quickly and parry that one out of play. Nico Brown, just incredibly quick, powerful shot with the left foot. Let's check it out again. Just nice continued pressure by Lexington, staying in and around the 18. Colomini, just a nice pass to Brown. Good first touch. You'd expect Lewis to make that save. Talented nonetheless. Go for the option at the edge of the box. Muhammad Robertson got back on side. Rolls it slow. Good under hit. Kelly heads it away. Captain Don Smart brings it in. Another one of those players that you talk about with for a first-year club, bringing in immense experience. 
35 years of age, the captain. And with the lead players by example. Going to head coach Sam Stockley as Will Bainham cleverly holds that out. Excuse me, it was actually last touched by Lexington, so held it out for a Knoxville throw. Deep inside their own half, Denny Fernandez demanding to hold it. Both of these teams have had up and down recent schedules in terms of their form. But with wins last time out, Lexington two wins in a row, both of them incredibly high scoring, thrilling affairs. 4-3 win at Northern Colorado, 3-2 win at home against Central Valley Fuego. It was a comeback and then they held off a comeback in those last two matches as Muhammad opens up to drive up the left-hand side. Goes between the legs of Halamini and Lewis can collect. On the flip side, we mentioned the win at Madison for Knoxville. Madison, a very strong team, one of the hardest to play against, according to everybody that you've talked to and across the league. To get points there is something that McKeever and everyone across Knoxville very happy to bring in a bit of confidence into the barrel brawl, where they currently are the side who hold the series edge, 1-0-1. Should there be another draw on this one, they would be deemed the winner of this first season rivalry. Interesting enough, the, the winner not just bragging rights, which is you know, reward in and of itself. Get a full-size whiskey barrel and a bottle of bourbon from a distiller in the loser's locale. So if Knoxville can inflict a draw or a win, they will get something from Lexington. If Lexington gets the three points today, they will get something from Knoxville. Appeals by Hilamini for a foul, but nothing given. Rudy Castro... Also fighting for it. Rudy Castro and Gio Calixtro, a pair of players recently brought in for Knoxville. Just needing some options and some bodies. They've been filled in with some great effect. He scored a winner in his first match off the, uh, from the penalty spot in the 92nd minute. Castro did. That was three matches ago now. But you can just see the shifts in players and where they typically play. See, Angelo Kelly is playing as almost a right center back right now with Ryan Chrysler to play in the center center back role. And how wide to the left, Danny Fernandez. And Derek Waldeck, typically the left wing back, playing almost as the deepest line midfielder. So a lot of shakeup. We'll see how it impacts things. Villa Lobos gets his feet tangled. Goes down. Out wide to the left, Muhammad. Brown. It's Muhammad making a forward run. It'll go shorter. Mane. Smart. They work it to Robertson on the right-hand side. He has Halimini as an option. He'll give it to him. He'll check back for Green. This one lofted. Lewis goes to claim. Gets a hand to it. Referee blows for a foul. I believe he believes. Muhammad did something. Maybe a push in the back. Calls for a foul nonetheless. Friendly discussion between the two of them. Christian Campo Hernandez, some early discussion. It will be a free kick nonetheless. Chrysler to Kelly. Kelly, again, we mentioned just kind of the role he's playing right now. He's been an uber versatile player for Mark McKeever to kind of fill things in. They've got their formation they like. They're 3-4-3, three, three, if you want to describe it that way, since this one's played out to Kalikstro, playing as the right wing back. But you can just see the th back three for Knoxville with Waldeck dropping a bit deeper. Players not in their usual spot. You usually see Waldeck out with his boots on the chalk on the far side of the pitch. Kelly maybe in the middle of the park. He's also played as the right wing back. As Danny Fernandez carries forward, a bit too heavy a touch. Waldeck, nice bit of control. Johnson. Castro gives it back to him. Bit of a heavy touch. Castro with a bit of a push in the back. Seja Gonzalez knocks him down. Foul is given. Both teams probing, feeling each other out in these opening moments of the match. Not a major opportunity for either side as of yet. 
Shot from distance for Lexington, or for Knoxville, I should say. Brown had a shot in the box. Decent opportunity, saved by Lewis, but for the first 14 minutes, nothing too remarkable as Bainham. Nice switch of play. Picks out Tate Robertson. Colomini, Mane. And now here's Green. Fox plays it to Seja Gonzalez, gets it back. Green trying one for Bainham, pass just off. Castro has it fired to his chest. Can't quite bring it under a spell. Smart. Lamini. Trying one. Wants Brown to chase onto it. Well, shepherded it out of play by Angelo Kelly. Did just enough to see that one out. Referee again. I think I wanted to be very clear that wants contact to be in pursuit of the ball. Small discussion with Kelly there as you see Sean Lewis prepping for a goal kick. These teams also meet in just an interesting home road form split for Knoxville in their last five matches at home. One win, three defeats, and a draw. For Lexington, one win, four defeats on their last five trips on the road. So one of those things could potentially see some points swinging in the favor of compared to the recent form as someone has to walk out of here with something. Played in the middle of the park. Waldeck collects it. Tried one out to the left, but it's intercepted by Robertson. Bainham, nice bit of hold-up play. Trying to go quick to Robertson out wide. It's just off of him. And Danny Fernandez has to drop back. Bit of a poor pass. Calixtro gets there. Keeps it in play on the right wing. It's going to spin positively for Tariq Muhammad. It'll keep it in play. Kicks it off of Calixtro. They'll allow that one to roll out. Goal kick for Amal Knight to take. Smart. Play this one to Green. He's got Robertson in his sights. Brilliant tackle, though, by Jake Keegan. Tracking back the forward. Gets a foot in the way. Knocked it out for a throw. Kept it away. Kalikstro intercepts. Plays it to Kelly. Low pass by Kelly. Fired to the feet of Castro. Knocks it out. Last touched. By Lexington. Here's Fernandez carrying up the left hand side. With him is Keegan. Played a bit wider than he usually does. It would have been a very Switched round Knoxville team due to limitations on the bench is Leo Santos, number 15 for them. Just 16 years old, he's a Knoxville native. He was their first ever academy signing back in March, but in an ideal world, wouldn't necessarily be making an 18 out of necessity. Would be rather a case of being pushed in there. But McKeever believes that he is capable of making a difference if he's introduced. This is lofted forward by Bainham. Brown is on hand. Going to bounce kindly for Lewis. Back to the keeper. And we haven't got confirmation on why Frank Ross was moved out of the 11 to the bench. I would imagine the most likely scenario is small tweak. Felt something a little bit in training. Maybe not ready for a full 90. He scored a goal the winner last time out. So a, a massive loss being felt. And it's forced to just kind of a late tweak. And probably not what Knoxville was planning for. You know that for sure based on just what they reported as their, their 11. Keegan 
Trying to chase something down on the channel. A lot of work to do. Did he get that? There he did indeed get there, but he touched it last. So his hard work will only lead to a goal kick. Pressure. Villalobos pressing from behind. Was he fouled? He was, says the referee. I think it's the moment for the ball to be recycled back and realize that it's not still in play. Slide tackle judged to be illegal by Pierre Manet. Referee again going for just a more talkative approach. Wants to walk the players through that one. We'll see it again. Just fighting for it in the middle of the park and Pierre Manet. See, got a bit of the ball, but definitely a lot of the man going behind him to get to it. Referee keeps his cards in his pocket, but does offer Lexington the foul there. And offers Knoxville a potential opportunity to go direct if they want to. Derek Waldeck's over it. Gio Calix throws it in an interesting spot to his right-hand side, and there are some options in the box. Waldeck wraps his foot around it. He has to go back and parry it away. Awkward. It spun a lot more than you'd think. Amal Knight initially might have thought it did, and he was going back towards his goal and had to put a vital hand up to keep that one out. Fans, get on your feet, might have started as a cross, but it may have ended as a shot. You can see it again from Derek Waldeck. As he rips that one in, and you see Knight backing up as they begin to curl more and more towards the goal. See a second angle, it's just just takes an awkward bit of spin and fortunate for Knight didn't land too hard against the post. He claims his corner though. A bit more authoritative on that second attempt. Bainham flicking that one on off the long ball from Knight. Goes back to, let, to Knoxville, should say. Haven't got a shot since the eighth minute. When Nico Brown tried one on target. Maybe you can call that Derek Waldeck. Free kick a shot. I got the initial attention is Kelly got that one caught under his feet and ends up kicking it out of play. Well, the tweaks from Lexington may limit their game plan and what they plan to do. They're definitely to throw off Lexington in terms of what they may have initially expected from Knoxville. As you can see, Sam Stockley dictating instructions from the touchline as Will Bainham tries to hold off. Kelly, nice bit of control. It's going to squirm free, and Villalobos can put a foot through it, hook it away. Foul committed, a push in the back by Seja Gonzalez. Sam's likely making his case known to the referee. Johnson touches that one back for Keegan. Hard to tell, but appears like Jake Keegan is playing as the left wing back. This one's lofted over the top. Illich was running towards it again and all night. Maybe something to watch out for. A bit I had to track back a little bit as that one bounced back towards him. Twice now that he's slightly misjudged it. Neither have led to any major harm for Lexington. But you can see the front two chasing down Calixtro, excuse me, Castro, I should say. And now Callum Johnson, rather than your typical Jake Keegan press, he's playing more outside on the left-hand side. This one's hooked forward. Bainham, nice bit of control, plays it in field for Tariq Muhammad. Big slide tackle by Calixtro, got enough of the ball. Muhammad feeling the effects. Low slow back up to his feet. 
We'll see if Knoxville will try and press quickly, but Muhammad back to his feet, and Knoxville not going to be progressive to take advantage of the left back, who was a bit down. Intercepted by Smart. Clever touch. Bainham was on hand, but just didn't quite make the run in time. Both teams finding their footing into this one. Not as quick a start as either had. Within eight minutes, it was 2-0 for Lexington in their last match. Not about right now is when a corner by Derek Waldeck picked out Jalen Chrysler. They made it 1-0 in the last match for Knoxville. Green intercepts. Back to Smart. Caught under his feet a little bit. Awkward. Chance to break now for Knoxville. Castro. There's a lot of green shirts around him. Nice. Brilliant bit of footwork to evade them all and wins the foul. Rudy Castro. Some really impressive footwork in the middle of the pitch. Just evades his opponents. And Derek Waldeck may look at this. A bit of eagerness. Try to whip one into the box. We can get a treated to a second look at these the footwork just keeping his opponents off guard just one extra move got past Monet it was brought down and that's going to allow Derek Waldeck who his last free kick was a little awkward for Knight can't be waved off of it by Johnson as I say that he goes back over it. Five players in around the edge of the box. Keegan entering the D makes it six. Options for Knoxville. 26th minute. Waldeck whips one in. Attacking his Chrysler on target. Saved by Knight. Not fully dealt with. Sits up. Calixtro. There's appeals for a handball. Chasing it down is Villalobos. Can he stand one up? He can. Head it away. The bicycle kick attempt is ambitious and it goes right into the arms of Knight. Our biggest action of the game so far leads to a pair of shots on target for one Knoxville. Let's see it again, just the bit of chaos as Waldeck whips one in as a brilliant ball. Almost the same connection that had the first goal last time. Crystal's shot blocked though. Save of the goal line by Knight and Villalobos just clipping one in at the back post. Ambitious from Castro. Would have been a an incredible effort. He was able to beat him from there as Don Smart pursues this one. Squirms free. Villalobos trying to press it. He blocks the clearance. Smart, though, on hand to pick it up. He's fouled. That will stop what Knoxville perceived as a potential counterattack. By far the craziest sequence of the match, though, so far. You can just see the, the creative mind of Rudy Castro. As someone bounces awkwardly, just kind of spinning all over the place. Goes for the bicycle kick attempt. You can't really fault him from there. You know, he's got his back to goal. There's a lot of players in between him and the goal. It's hard to really gauge things as Colomini's touch knocks it out of play. Be a goal kick for Lewis. Sometimes you look at a bicycle, bicycle kick and say maybe that wasn't the best decision making, that there could have been taking the touch. Going for a more controlled shot. That one ticked off both boxes of just being the logical best choice and just being very aesthetically pleasing. Smart with a tackle to win it once, pokes it away from a second try. Here is Smart. Say Gonzalez plays it in. Smart. Back to Knight. Brilliant touch by Bainham. Brings it into a spell. It's worked out now. It's Nico Brown. What can he do here? One on one. Nico Brown onto the right foot. Low one. Was it touched? It was not. Brown just catching that one. Too much whip. Pulled it wide of the goal. To see the dynamic nature he possesses. Tough to handle one-on-one, -on -one, some step overs. Finds the space on the right foot. Forced a bit of support defense from Kelly. 
would have been a really impressive effort if he was able to get that one on frame. Trying to go for that bottom left corner. Just couldn't catch it quite right. It's twice now that he's shot for that bottom left corner. Something to watch out for as he cuts in from that left wing. Illich back to Waldeck. Trying one for Keegan over the top. Jake Keegan can run onto it. Stepping though, attacking it well was Kalen Fox. He knocks it out. And Keegan earns the side a throw. Castro. Smart puts a foot in, knocks it out. 30 minutes into this one, four shots for the hosts, two for the visitors. The best chance is going the way of Knoxville as falling down is Waldeck. Foul is given. Referee in constant communication with the players. It's a rivalry match. Teams, no love lost for one another. It's done a good job so far of making sure tempers don't boil over, and it's been a very cleanly officiated match so far. And with the drama that one Knox will have gone through in the last few matches, I think they would be a welcome return. Callum Johnson over this one, the right-footed effort on this free kick. Johnson whips this one in. The back post, awkward. It may have just, Illich, I think it was offsides it was. It almost broke Kylie from at the back post, and it came out of nowhere and just kind of hit him on the head. Comes to nothing in the end, and it'll be free kick or goal kick, whatever it is, the same result. It'll be at the feet of ML Knight. Bainham gets ahead to it. One finds Callum Johnson. Pass, picks out Keegan. Smart gets a foot in. Waldeck steps up, gets to it. Played into the channel. Offsides given against Nico Brown as he chased that one down. He didn't touch it, but the referee may just pull it back for offsides nonetheless. This time, will our ferocious one-knock monsters please make their way to the south corner flag? Here's Chrysler. Pass leading on Kelly a bit, and he'll leave it for Kalik Stro. Headed back, Don Smart gets ahead to it, nodded towards his keeper. Trying to turn up field. Tackle by Kalikstro knocks it out. It's given us a foul, as a matter of fact. Kalikstro going through the back of Muhammad. Now Seha Gonzalez to loft one forward. Bainham fighting for it. Squirms free. Ilya Illich. Can nod it down for Keegan. Jake Keegan, one on one with Mane. Kicks it off of him. Bit of frustration. Didn't have many options to go with for the pass.
Johnson to Waldeck. Back to Fernandez. We are seeing just the constant tactical evolution in this match as we see this one spread over the top. Jake Keegan to run onto it. it bounce kindly for him. Keegan can keep it in play. He did, but it bounces for Smart. Go for the long option. Brown flicks it on. Halimini is in the press. Did he take out Chrysler after the fact? He may have. But you can see this on, the, on my left-hand side, things constantly evolving. So it wasn't coming together between both Halimini and Chrysler, and both a little slow to get up after the clearance by the center back for Knoxville. He's back up, sitting upwards. You're going to see it again. His referee has a yellow card in his hand. We'll get that adjudicated in a moment. You can just see that one lofted forward, and you'd imagine a little bit reckless by Halimini, just kind of leaving his body in there a little bit. Confirmation. Pila Halamini given the yellow card. First one of the match for either side. 35 minutes into a, a rivalry matchup. Maybe a bit later than some would have expected if you were going to guess what minute. 35 is when Halamini gets our yellow card tally going. Flicked forward. Kicked away. It'll be smartly done by Roberts and knocks it out for a throw rather than a corner. Waldeck with it. Bounces it for Castro. We'll give it to Johnson. A lot of jerseys on that far side. Waldeck clipped across goal. Calixtro is chasing it down. We'll get a knee to it. Calixtro and Muhammad one on one. Low one into the box. Keegan. Can he make it three and three? Fighting for it. It's going to bounce. Halamini hooks it away. Smart. He's trying to press Johnson to win it back, but just off. It's Waldeck. Nice pass to pick out Johnson. He's passed just off of Castro. Sits up kindly for Mane. Nice bit of footwork to evade his opponents. We'll slow things up with Seja Gonzalez. We'll get it back, give it right back. Driving forward. Kalen Fox checks his run. Sprays it forward. Leaping for it. Bainan falls for Muhammad. Bit of a fight between him and Kelly. Here goes his whistle. Goes for a foul for Knoxville. Kelly. Fox knocks it away. Polamini felt a bit of contact from behind and went down. Picked out Seja Gonzalez regardless. Referee kept his whistle away from his mouth. Green. Massive coming together on the near side between Kalikstro and Muhammad. The referee pulls out the red card. Massive moment in this one, blowing the match open. Gio Kalikstro leaping for that one with the right foot. And caught Tariq Muhammad near the head, looking at his chest area. And in the 39th minute, sent packing. 
massive, massive on the doorstep of halftime. A bit, a bit late. You can just see Jalen Chrysler making his pleas for this one. He's saying maybe he ducked his head a little bit. We'll see it again here. Switch of play. Both players going for it. The foot certainly a little high. Catching him quite in the chest. You can see Sam Stockley right on hand making the quick case with the high boot and the referee bringing the red card out. Not a match of many chances. And that's the biggest thing we've seen so far is Tariq Muhammad. You feel the effects of that one a little bit as he was caught in the chest he's holding. Look, you have the high boot. You always run the risk of things like this happening. And now for the second time in three matches, one Knoxville brought down to ten men near the halfway point of the game. So we'll see how Lexington respond, how one Knoxville respond. You see Mark McKeever right at the edge of the touchline of the pitch trying to change things around. So the right wing back now for Knoxville sent off. Will they drop to a back four? You can just kind of see a back four forming for Knoxville. How aggressive is Lexington in these final five minutes? They haven't had a great clear-cut chance in this one, but you imagine just with now being up a man for the final 50-plus minutes, that'll certainly help things. Hard to disagree with the referee's decision in a lot of ways. Just once the boot goes up high, you run the risk of if the ball is not won, a lot of risk with that play. And so Gio Kalikstro facing the brunt of that. Switch of play. Bainham was the target. It's headed away by Kelly. Nodded down. As you can see, Callum Johnson has shifted over to the right-hand side. That's Illich, excuse me. Johnson a bit further inside. This is the rightmost midfielder. Almost a 4-4-1 developing for Knoxville. I'm sure Mark McKeever and... The group would love to just see things out into halftime, nil-nil, and to try and regroup, maybe make a sub, tactical rotations, down a man. Not a ton of stoppages, but we'll see how with the four minutes plus stoppage time progress. Green, eye on a switch of play, goes over, finds Muhammad. Two in the box. Tariq Muhammad steps past Illich. Now up against Kelly, kicks it off of him. Brilliant bit of defending from the Honduran. Wins his side of goal kick. Nicely done by him. 1v1 with Muhammad on the left-hand side. A dangerous spot, an awkward spot to be in. But he handles it with a lot of experience. Again, leads the league and tackles one. He's capable in those areas. He's 1v1 with his opponents. Castro to chase. Fox will be there first. Johnson. Here's Kelly. Ilya Illich playing it into the touchline. Kelly kicks off his opponent. Wins his side a corner kick. Throw in rather. Actually went out on the to the left. Depending on how you're looking at it. Went out on the side because it's a throw in rather than a corner kick. What a time it would be for Knoxville to open the scoring. Yes, you're down a man, but can score goals nonetheless. Mane trying one, hooks it away. Nico Brown was in the press. Chrysler kicked it forward. It's going to fall for Don Smart. He's going to go first time. Picks out Tate Robertson with a beautiful ball on the right side. Green jersey streaking forward. Robertson cuts it back. Whipped it in. Oh, just off of Bainham, just behind him see the intention he ended up playing it behind him rather than leading him into the box Robertson 
just off on his connection with Bainham. Something that we'll be watching out for for the rest of the match, I'm sure, is just how Lexington break forward with numbers in those moments. And it, for the second goal, last time out for Lexington was a brilliant pass by Don Smart. Just breaking the lines, picking out Tate Robertson on the right-hand side on a run over the top. He squared it back for Nico Brown. You saw it there. It's a foul being given against Lexington. Just the, the first time pass by Don Smart, his range of passing, probably the best on the pitch out of any player, able to just loft that one into the path of Robertson. Switch play, the direction of attack quickly. And this might be a, a bit of a window into the future if they go direct with this, just by that, just inside the attacking half for Knoxville. And Derek Waldeck has five players lined up on the edge of the 18. In the 45th minute, Waldeck launches it forward. Chrysler attacks. Mane heads it away. Callum Johnson, he has Waldeck on the overlap. You see, they're trying to press things. They're trying to force the issue. They're keeping the numbers forward. Johnson lofted. Chrysler heads it across goal. Flicked by Fernandez, sits up. It's going to squeeze into the box. A turn and a shot from Castro, hooked away. Two minutes of stoppage time. You wouldn't believe that Knox with the team playing without a man down as Waldeck whips it forward. Chrysler attacking it, nods it across goal, headed away by Fox, or cleared away by Fox, I should say. Villalobos. He's got Keegan. He's one on one with Robertson. Did he foul him? He did. And this is a very promising position. They've had both Callum Johnson and Derek Waldeck take these free kicks from the left-hand side. And we'll be in the second minute of stoppage time. They've got a chance to just sneak in and grab a goal. Head into break. Yeah, they're down a man, but if you're up a goal, you've got something to fight for and hold on to rather than sit on the unease of a nil-nil match. See Callum Johnson in his right foot preparing for this one. Villalobos entering near the wall. Whipped into the box. Knight goes to claim it. Doesn't get it, but it's out of play now. Knight feeling the effects of that one. Referee, I believe, saying it took a touch along the way, so it'll be staying on this end for a corner kick. Is ML Knight is in a good deal of pain, feeling his chest. Appeals from Don Smart and the Lexton players for a foul on that one. They're going to they wave on a bit of a bit of treatment. We'll see. We can try and see it again. As Johnson whips it in with the right foot. You'll see Knight step off his line. You can kind of see a bit of contact going for that one. Referee keeping his whistle to his mouth. It looked like it took a touch. Right, he kind of parried it away, got something to it. But you can see with the accumulation of players, it's going to be still a corner kick here. Not going to have to quickly get past the bit of pain he felt from the last set piece. And you can see just a bunch of players right at the penalty spot. Bit of pushing and shoving going. Fans on your feet, let's make this is a big one. A this is a big moment. Waldeck to the back post. Past everybody, a foul ruled against Knoxville. And that will be our first 45 minutes in the books. It may not be known for the opportunities it provided either team, the massive moments of spectacular attacking moments, but it will be defined by the red card for Gio Calixtro that will define the next 45 minutes and where these two teams head going from here on out. Knight feeling the effects a little bit after that one. They'll hope that he's good for the second 45 minutes. But a fascinating first 45. The two teams probing, not finding fantastic opportunities as of yet. We'll see what the second 45 has in store. It's going to be 10 versus 11. The hosts down a man after the red card for Gio Calixer. Some halftime content to come in a moment. But as things stand, nil-nil between one Knoxville and Lexington Sporting Club. In the back in a moment on ESPN+. Plus. Are you ready? Ready for more of the game you love. 
Ready for more players and more teams. Ready for more stadiums, for more fans in more cities. This is a different league. The USL Super League. Built for the future of women's soccer. Bridging the journey from youth to pro, connected to the global game, and bringing it all closer to home. Are you ready? We all have goals. But let's be honest. Most of us aren't going to be professional athletes. But if your goal is to finish your degree, we can help. Come to a university that puts your goals first. Bellevue University, your partner in finishing goals. Attacker now cutting towards the box, fires a shot, and the Whites are on the board first. Toomey with a cross, it's in! Hayes off the feed, and San Diego is right back even. Plays the delivery, right in. Woo! New Mexico takes the lead. It's halftime of the barrel brawl between One Knoxville and Lexington Sporting Club brought to you by KUB Fiber. Week 23 of USL League One starts today and we had a great week 22 with a six game slate last Saturday. Let's kick it off with Charlotte hosting South Georgia Tormenta. Some early action here in the eighth minute. Trace Orambuyu gets it in the box. Clever square across goal. Picks out Joel Johnson and a nice left footed finish. Makes it an early 1-0 lead for the hosts. Now Hector Acosta clips it forward. Miguel Ibar is in the area and and a really clever first time flick. The chip is good, 2-0. They're up in within 20 minutes against Tormenta. They have a response though, Mukwele Akale. Talk about that for a response. Brilliant left footed effort, makes it two goals to one. In response though, brilliant finish. Joel Johnson puts it in. Nick Spielman's header at the back post is good. Restores the two goal lead. And they would see the match out with a three goals to two victory. Late penalty from Pedro Fonseca would just be consolation in the end. Charlotte moves to third in the table. Now Lexington hosting Central Valley Fuego in the fourth minute. Tate Robertson puts an excellent free kick on frame into that bottom left corner, arrowing that one home for his third goal of the season. Now Don Smart trying to keep things rolling. Eighth minute now, Tate Robertson turns provider, picks out Nico Brown. They take a 2-0 lead within 10 minutes at home. A brilliant start for Lexington. Now, second half, Victor Falk trying to bring things back, does it all himself. Just an excellent left-footed finish from range. Some great strikes early on last weekend. Don Smart, though, in response, restores the two-goal lead, three goals to one. They'd see this one out, three goals to two. A late consolation goal would make it awkward late on in the 88th minute, but it would end there. Lexington back-to-back -back wins, taking down Central Valley Fuego. Now, North Carolina hosting the Greenville Triumph. Here in the 36th minute, the visitors trying to get things going. The ball is going to be fought for on the edge of the area, squirming around a bit. It's going to be brought down by Aaron Walker, picks out Liam McKinnon, and his shot picks out the back of the net. A 1-0 lead with his low finish continues his hot form. Now North Carolina looking for a second-half response, trying to get things going. The initial shot saved. Garrett McLaughlin, though, on the rebound, puts it home with the left foot. One all in the 54th minute. Now the 56th minute, just moments after, a long throw toss into the box. Fought for a little bit. It's going to be brought down by Louis Perez and just strokes that one home into the bottom left corner. They complete the comeback for a 2-1 win. North Carolina still top of the league, passing the 40-point mark. Now, Chattanooga hosting Richmond. Another interesting matchup. Ball going to be played in here for Emiliano Terzaghi. The clever forward, experience all under his belt. Nice pass, picks out Matthew Bentley, takes the 1-0 lead late on in the first half of the 43rd minute. Then Neil Vignoles puts one into the box off the corner. Headed home by Ryan Sierakowski, nodding that one in, takes a 2-0 lead on the road. Now, in response, how are they going to respond? Will Richmond, Papa Mensa picks the ball up and puts home a brilliant finish with the right foot. Cuts the lead in half. It's a 2-1 game now. 
And just moments after, 72nd minute now, ball whipped in, headed on to frame, but Renteria, Richard Renteria, nods that one home. 2-2, two, two. the comeback complete, but they want to try and get the three points. Javon Marsh from distance puts that one away. Three goals to two. Maybe a late playoff push to come for Chattanooga. Those three points at home could be vital in that pursuit. Now, forward Madison taking on one Knoxville. First half going to be a nice passing move here from Knoxville. Aiden Messiah is going to collect it here and square it across goal for Cheney. Looks good, but was actually ruled for offside. A tight decision that went against forward Madison. So they're still nil-nil after two disallowed goals early on. And one Knoxville, it goes from bad to worse. Derek Waldeck whips it in. It's not at home by Jalen Chrysler. They take a 1-0 lead in the 24th minute. However, forward Madison, they will get a goal to count. Nazim Bartman gets number 10 all-time as a forward Madison player, becomes the all-time leading scorer in club history in the 32nd minute. So that's one all after a bit of early chaos. Frank Ross is going to be in the box, but fighting for this is Jake Keegan. He will pick out Frank Ross, and they'll retake the lead. Two goals to one, some huge Sean Lewis saves would help see out the three points. A big, big three points. A setback for Madison as the visitors get the three points. Final game of last Saturday. Northern Colorado hosting Union Omaha. Penalty, Joe Gallardo puts that brilliantly in the top left corner. Takes a 1-0 lead for the visitors. Now, Lucky Oprah going to be on hand there. It's going to sit up nicely for him after potential handball and puts it home in the back of the net. One all in the 38th minute. Now, just on the doorstep of halftime, another penalty. This time, Pedro Dolabella puts that one away, and it is a, or J.P. Skears, excuse me, puts that one home, 2-1 lead. Now, Connor Doyle going to be lofting this one in the box, headed home by Pedro Dolabella. Takes a 3-1 lead for the insurance goal. They search for a way back into the game. Northern Colorado will, and they're going to get a goal here from Lucky Oprah. Won't matter in the end. The 3-2 win will be for Omaha on the road, and you see Oprah put it home. Those were your highlights from last weekend. News and notes on the other side of this break after a great weekend in USL League One. Are you ready? Ready for more of the game you love. Ready for more players and more teams. Ready for more stadiums, for more fans in more cities. This is a different league. The USL Super League. Built for the future of women's soccer. Bridging the journey from youth to pro, connected to the global game, and bringing it all closer to home. Are you ready? going to be professional athletes. But if your goal is to finish your degree, we can help. Come to a university that puts your goals first. Bellevue University, your partner in finishing goals. Ready for more of the game you love. Ready for more players and more teams. Ready for more stadiums, for more fans in more cities. This is a different league. The USL Super League. Built for the future of women's soccer. Bridging the journey from youth to pro, connected to the global game, and bringing it all closer to home. Are you ready? More halftime content brought to you by KUB Fiber coming your way as one Knoxville and Lexington Sporting Club fight in the barrel brawl. We can dig into some content from around the USL League One, get you some news and notes from around the league. 
international duty. Alex Cerritos called up to the El Salvador national tr team training camp earlier this week. A special opportunity for the Central Valley Fuego player. League Two champ returning. Daniel Robles, after winning the League Two title with Ballard FC, re-signs with Northern Colorado. Some championship experience. Could they make a late run for a USL League One championship? That remains to be seen. And Jaden Onan recording an assist in both of their matches last week for Ford Madison. He is your Week 22 player of the week. And you can see the full team of the week. A really interesting split here. 10 different teams seeing a player feature. A nice split overall for Lexington. Tate Robertson, a goal and an assist performance. Last time out for them against Central Valley Fuego helps him get into that 11. There's an overall very strong team of the week as points being split and fought for by every team. Only team with multiple players, South Georgia Tormenta. And looking ahead for the upcoming schedule on Saturday, we got our one game here today and a five game Saturday evening. Some great ones here. Some teams inside and outside the playoffs fighting for position. Northern Colorado trying to end a four match slump against Greenville. Central Valley trying to keep a bit of form going themselves against Charlotte. And you see North Carolina want to keep top spot against Richmond. On the other side of this break, we'll get you back to the second half of the barrel brawl between one Knoxville and Lexington Sporting Club on the other side of this break on ESPN+. Plus. Are you ready? Ready for more of the game you love. Ready for more players and more teams. Ready for more stadiums, for more fans in more cities. This is a different league. The USL Super League, built for the future of women's soccer, bridging the journey from youth to pro, connected to the global game, and bringing it all closer to home. Are you ready? honest most of us aren't going to be professional athletes but if your goal is to finish your degree we can help come to a university that puts your goals first Bellevue University your partner in finishing goals Attacker now cutting towards the box, fires a shot, and the Whites are on the board first. Toomey with a cross, it's in! Perez off the feed, and San Diego is right back even. Plays the delivery right in. Woo! New Mexico takes the lead. Nearing sunset here at Regal Stadium in one Knoxville. Kentucky just been a fantastic fantastic Tennessee I should say as they're taking on Lexington from Kentucky in the barrel brawl Darby been a fascinating first 45 let's get you the highlights get you up to speed with where we are at after those first 45 minutes not a ton of opportunities for either side we'll see kind of a bit of progression here from Lexington on this left hand side picks out Nico Brown he puts a shot decent probably the best hit shot of the match so far was saved though by Sean Lewis We'll see a second look at this one. Just well brought down by Colomini, picking out Brown. He had a few shots in that first 45. We might show you here in this highlight package. But again, not a first 45 littering with opportunities. Just whipped in the free kick by Waldeck. Was a bit awkward for Amal Knight to deal with, but he got a left hand to it. We'll see it again. Just whips that one, kind of almost curling towards that top left corner. And he did just enough to keep it away. <laughs> Waldo giving that one in. Again, both teams. We'll show you the full stats in a moment, but neither team with a ton of opportunities. Eight shots for the hosts, two for the visitors. But again, just not a ton of opportunities on frame for either side as we end. The red card, most important thing for Gio Calixtro, means that there are just 10 blue jerseys on the pitch for one Knoxville for the second 45 minutes. 11 v 10. Lexington hold the edge in their numbers. See them brewing something here to open the second 45. They had a few more players on the right-hand side progressing things, but again, heading from left to right. 
green jerseys with the white shorts of the visitors from Lexington, Kentucky, and the hosts from Knoxville, Tennessee. There's the blue jerseys. Records in the top left corner. Both of them chasing the playoff line. Currently 32 points, occupied by Greenville in sixth place. Jack Edwards, delighted to be with you here. These are the two sides that are the newest additions to USL League One, both of them in their first seasons professionally. Smart passes over to Green. Again, third matchup here in the Barrel Brawl of 2023. First matchup all the way back on March 18th. It was the first match of the season for both teams. There was a Jimmy Villalobos penalty, a Don Smart penalty, and then a Jake Keegan winner in the 40th minute. That one went in the way of Knox when they last played here at Regal Soccer Stadium. Brown brought down by Chrysler. A free. Nice blow for a free kick. Both teams making a change. You see Gabriel Claudio coming in for Ilya Illich. That is probably the most important one to watch out for for Knoxville. Bringing on Claudio as a defender. Off going Illich. More of a forward option. 32-year-old Serbian coming off in favor of the 23-year-old from Yuma, Arizona. And on the flip side, Charlie Machel coming on for Pila Kalamini. An interesting sub there as well. A bit of control for them in the middle of the park. They hope that Machel can bring and an early opportunity to break the scoring open. They've got a free kick on the far left side. Options in the area. Whipped into the box. Headed away by Keegan. Forward. The vital intervention. Headed away. Box. Bit of Rolls Royce center back in there trying to collect that one and drive forward on the right wing. But again, you can see in the top left of your screen, Gio Calixtro. His red card. The most notable event of our match through the first 48 minutes. Balls for Keegan. Into the box. Castro trying to work his way in. Picks out Keegan. Nice bit of control. Driving forward is Kelly. Right footed shot from distance. Picks it out in the top right corner. A moment of magic from Angelo Kelly Rosales. Opens the scoring down a man. They take the lead in the barrel brawl, one goal to nil. What an effort it was from Kelly. Just picks it out with the right foot, driving forward a little bit, nice bit of footwork, and buried that one in the top right corner. Let's get you two looks back at this one just to see it again. Has to fight through some challenges. Give it a bit of space though. Picks his head up and just a well-placed shot. Not beating him with power. That's just placed perfectly in that top right corner. We'll see it again. Stip skips past one. Places it. Amal Knight diving in that direction, but diving in vain in the end. Well, well, well. Down to ten men, but they take... The 1 0 lead. Lexington with a bit of fire. Tariq Muhammad up against the goal scorer. Spins him. Driving into the box. Tariq Muhammad. It's clipped. That'll be a corner kick. Nice bit of tracking back by Kelly. Knocks it out of play. The assist on the goal by number five, Jalen Chrysler. We're going to hear from the PA. Just Jalen Chrysler being credited with the assist after scoring a goal last match. Now an assist. Got two goals, two assists on the year. It's a center back. Some solid contributing from him. From distance, just over. Not an immediate response for Lexington there. 
But you can see with the substitutions, we didn't fully dig into them. But Gabriel Claudio coming in for Ilya Illich. Brings in a bit of stability. Can play on the right-hand side of that defense. He's played as a right center back, right wing back. A pretty versatile option for them there. Charlie Machel, conversely for Lexington. Him coming on for Pila Chilomini. There's a 28-year-old Englishman, good amount of experience. You imagine they'll have a lot of the ball, especially after this one now scored as Kasser has to chase it down, but a bit of awkwardness, and it forced a bit of an intervention there. Kasser committed a foul chasing it down. Rudy Castro will have a lot of the pressing burden on his shoulders, down a man. One of his forward options, one of his, his former teammate, forward teammates being removed from the 11 means that you can just see him kind of all isolated up front. He'll have to do a lot of running, a lot of pressing. Here's Green. His side, his side now looking for a response away back into this one. They haven't had a great shot as of yet. Ten shots to three. We didn't get you a chance to show you the full stats. Can break them down for you. Possession split just in Lexington's favor by just a few percentage points as Kelly nods that one back. Running onto it is Claudio. Can he get there in time? His slide tackle does keep it in play. Impressively done by the substitute. Ten shots, four on target for Knoxville. Three shots, one on target for Lexington. Here's Don Smart. Switches play, picks out. Now wide is Muhammad. He kicks off his opponent. Wants it to go out of play. Looks like the throw in quick into the box. Back to Muhammad. Fakes it, slides it back. Mane, try to switch of play, but Jake Egan got ahead to it. Mentioned him in the open, he has five goals on the year. Scored one in both of the matches, scored the winner in the equalizer, so he's had a massive role in all elements of this derby so far. But he's playing a bit more defensively now, whipped into the box. Lewis gets his hands to it, comes up for Mane. Cuts it across, picked out Brown, goes across goal. He was onside. Kept in, but just not a play. Tate Robertson, what a moment that was. Sean Lewis forced into making a parried save. Went out to the edge of the box and actually came up quite nicely. One of the better opportunities of the match. We'll see it again. Tariq Muhammad whipped it in. Parried it to the top of the box, and that one ended up being clipped. He was on side. Nico Brown went quick to him. Fighting for it. Smart. He was on it, but now he's going to foul from behind. His opponent brings him down. Select the official match ball supplier of the USL League One and many elite leagues throughout Europe. Visit www.us.select-sport.com for the latest select products, specials, and more. Select the player's choice. Chrysler. Clever pass. Picks out Waldeck. Keegan. Back to Waldeck. Don Smart. Knoxville always a tough team to break down defensively. Resolute in their principles. Fox. Intercepted from distance. Trying to pick all in light out of goal. It's just wide. He's not getting there. If that one's on frame, an ambitious effort out of nothing. 
nearly doubling the score in this one. Wow. Caught me off guard. I believe that was Callum Johnson, I want to say. We'll get you confirmation potentially in a moment as this one squirms for Bainham. Brilliant pass. Picks out Tate Robertson. Whips one into the box. Parried away by Lewis. It'll be a corner kick. Streaking onto it was Nico Brown. Just couldn't quite put a foot on target with it. But Sean Lewis was brave. It was Callum Johnson who tried the halfway line effort. That went just wide of goal. It nearly was end-to-end -end action. Right after his effort from the halfway line, there was the Robertson cross, and now it's a corner kick. Robertson will be able to take. They're in the six-yard box, whipped in, headed away by Chrysler. Machel on hand, nods it down for his midfield partner, Smart. Fox. Here's Robertson. Possession slightly at halftime in favor of Lexington beginning to swell to about 55%. You'd imagine it's going to stay exactly like this if the lead stays with Knoxville as Robertson whips one into the box. Tall header, not fully dealt with. Mane goes down, looking for something that he wasn't going to get. Castro, get back to Claudio. Goes long. The goal scorer, Kelly Rosales, fighting for it. He's going to get there first. He's brought down. There's appeals. A lot of frustration. The referee produces the yellow card for Seja Gonzalez. And they're saying he might have been the last man. They're appealing for a red card. They wanted to bring it back down to even numbers in terms of the men, 10 to 10. And C. Fernandez just pointing to saying it was the last line. Keep going with it. Earns the yellow card for his opponent, I should say. <laughs> you can see immediately on hand was Jalen Chrysler. It'll make their job a lot easier. They were evened up back at 10 to 10. But as you see in the top left of your screen, Gio Calique shows red card. And back into the first half means that despite holding the lead, they're down a man. They got the freaking opportunity. Waldeck standing over it. Whipped it in. Headed away. Mane scooped it away. Johnson back to Villalobos. Waldeck. Puts out of his left foot. Whips him towards the box. It's headed away by Fox. Waldeck again operating in a so uh, position on the right hand side. Been awkward with his favored right foot. Clever pass. Picked out Castro. Still fighting for it. It's for Keegan. He was offsides, though. Flag goes up. A bit of an exaggerated fall from Castro after Owen Green came into the area. And Machel pushing him back to where he came from. We'll see if the yellow card is produced for Green for his efforts coming over. Referee will indeed book Owen Green. Likely just to prevent any further, and also I believe Castro as well being booked for his efforts there. Making his case to the referee. Christian Campo Hernandez, to his credit, has heard out players from both teams. A lot of discussions for both of them. Rudy Castro as well as Green, both booked. Between Seja Gonzalez in the book from the second half alone. Flamini was also booked for, for Lexington, but he was brought off. And obviously the most important card of the match so far, Kalik Strohs, which was red. A caution has been issued by the referee selecting that team number three. You can see coming on now. Owen Green. Say a win, so so Kim. A caution has also been issued. They'll be coming on for Owen Green. It's going to likely move Tate Robertson back to the right back position. Move so so Kim into a more attacking, proactive position. 
kicked off his opponent by Robertson. And again, showcases the versatility and options that Tate Robertson offers you. He's playing as a right midfielder to start this match, but you want to bring on a more creative midfielder for a right back. You can stick your leading assister with three goals, seven assists on the year. Tate Robertson at right back, and he can do a job defensively, hold your shape, but also just offer you still continued attacking support. Owen Green, to his credit, no slouch in the attacking end of things. Has a goal and an assist on the year and a constant effort on the overlap. The nutmeg picks out Brown, another one, trying to make things stay alive. Callum Johnson does just enough to see it out of play. Earns a side of goal kick. Kalen Fox. Brown back to Robertson. An interesting insight here from the opening 15 minutes. Lexington have held over 70% possession in the first 15 minutes of this half. But the goal has gone the way of Knoxville's. Muhammad one-on-one -on -one with Claudio gets past him. Into the box. Tariq Muhammad, low one across everybody. Keegan gets a vital foot in to stop it and clears it away. Jake Keegan, known for his goals for Knoxville. But he's coming up big defensively, dropping deep. Selfless play from him. Trying to claw this one, keep it alive. Pass just off of Kim. Robertson whips it in. Past everybody and goes out of play. Dangerous. Trying to pick up Bainham. Sandy took a touch. Conflicting for both the assistant and the main referees. And I believe they're going to say it's a, goal or it's a corner kick, I should say. Certainly looked to be closer to being a goal kick, but the main referee, our main referee, Christian Capo Hernandez, saw something, saw a touch on the ball from Robertson into the box. And that's going to allow them with this corner kick opportunity. They go short. Muhammad, cut it back. Kim, whipped in, back post over everybody. This one will be a goal kick for sure. Don't miss a minute of the action in 2023, whether your club is on the road or at home. Catch nearly every second of USL League One action on ESPN Plus, the home to the USL, La Liga, the Bundesliga, UFC, and more. Sign up today at plus.espn.com. Sean Lewis going to be playing the eternal time-wasting game as a goalkeeper. Got to toe the line of enough time to, to eke off the clock, but not quite so much that the referee notices and books you and stops you from doing it to a, an excessive amount again. Robertson. Looking from right to left. Here's Kim. Nice bit of footwork. Evades his opponent. Swooped into the box. Lewis gets two hands to it. Not fully dealt with. Keegan will put a foot through it and knock it away. Switch of play. Headed away by Claudio. Kelly touches it down. Can be cleared fully by Gabriel Claudio. Fighting for it. Castro. He goes down. Was he fouled? Referee says yes, he was. Great hold up play from Castro to 
win the foul. And it's against a player in Zaya Gonzalez, who is booked. So he's got a very tight leash as things stand. Okay, a bit of, a bit of cramp looks to be Castro after going down for that one. See Kali Balogun preparing to come on. Bringing on the six foot four center forward on for Pierre Manet. Senegalese midfielder coming off. Couldn't quite get fully stuck into the match. The hope that Balogun can kind of shake things up, offer a physical presence up front. He's looking for his first barrel brawl. Goal. Leaving the match is number 25, Pierre Manet. Waldeck whips this one in. Headed away by Bainham. Fully dealt with by Kim. Sean Lewis. You'll see a common thing that he'll be doing here is forcing his opponents to press him, make him pick up the ball. He's going to be in no rush to pick it up because when the ball's at his feet, there's no clock in anything. When it's in his hands, referee will have a not so official silent clock in his head, making sure that he's not taking up too much time. From keeper to keeper, the ball goes over everybody. Mitchell. Smart will bring it in. Don Smart passes out. It's Brown to Smart. Robertson. Those three combined for a goal in their last match last weekend. Tariq Muhammad has Don Smart. He's calling for it. He gets it. Brilliant pass, picks out Nico Brown, he's in the box, one-on-one, -on -one. Brown to the left foot. Nice clearance away by Callum Johnson, he was alert to things, put a foot through it. Driving, it's Tariq Muhammad. Getting to the byline, keeps it alive, still with it. So, so Kim. Goes back. Machel whips it in. He's going to sit up. Balogun trying to get there. Whistle went before he went down. Foul committed by Bainham. Chance died there. Will Bainham looking for goal number two on the year. Pilling the referee after the foul that he was called for. Both, both him at six foot two. Balagoon at six foot four. There's a physical presence that Lexington can offer up front with these long passes forward, trying to just shift things around. Penn knocks Phil in. Is that a foul? Referee says no. DiCastro feeling the effects on his back a little bit. Say Gonzalez again has to be careful. He's on a yellow card after bringing down Kelly in transition. Don Smart. Kim. Nico Brown with his back to goal. Fox. Muhammad. Goes direct. Fernandez gets ahead to it, knocks it away. Here's Don Smart into the area. Slides one for Brown. Knocks it off of Waldeck. It'll be a corner kick on this near side. 
Tate Robertson moving over. It'll be an outswinger if he wants to take it with the right. Tariq Muhammad going with the left foot. Catch the first ESPN2 USL doubleheader on Saturday when Detroit City plays host to Las Vegas Lights. Action heads west to see San Diego Loyal welcome New Mexico United. Coverage begins at 7.30 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. That's August 19th tomorrow. A great doubleheader on ESPN2 to come up. Tariq Muhammad with the left foot corner goes short for Tate Robertson with the right foot. Whips one in towards the back post. It was attacked and goes gratefully into the hands of Sean Lewis. Machel didn't quite catch it sweetly. Player goes down to the process. It was Angelo Kelly. But Sean Lewis, not sure he knew a ton about it, but it ended up falling gratefully. It's actually Claudio, excuse me, falls gratefully into the hands of Sean Lewis. Let's check it out again. Whipped in by Robertson. Dangerous. Looks like it be Balogun who attacked it. He even hit an arm, and it bounced. Didn't take a touch from Machel. Should have been corrected myself there. And Lewis. Caught it now. A bit of tending to for Claudio. Gabriel Claudio back to his feet, off the pitch. Sportingly, Balogun will toss it back into Lewis. Claudio, good to come back into the match. So back to 10, briefly on to 9, which even more crisis scenario for Knoxville there as Lewis takes this one long. Kim, slide tackle, knocks out a play. Johnson was appealing for to be heading his team's direction, but it will be heading the way of the visitors. What a three points this would be if Knoxville can secure it. Down a man, but you got the goal even when it was nil-nil down to ten men. Angelo Kelly, brilliant finish, brilliant finish. Probably the best goal we've seen so far in the Barrel Brawl of 2023. His finish has got us here at one nil currently for the hosts. Lexington be probing. They'll be searching for an equalizer. Here's Muhammad. Whips this one in. This goes past everybody. There's appeals for some handballs, but it may have just been out of pure frustration and surprise that it got past everybody. Tate Robertson. Did he keep it in play? No, he did not. It's going to be a throw. Touched by Lexington. The throw in will advance position a little bit. See Kyle McDowell preparing for an entrance into the match on the bottom of your screen. I believe he's waiting for the right moment. Bring back in the English defender. It's tossed back in. Gastro. Smart to Brown. Nico Brown back to Robertson. Tate Robertson whips it into the back post. Balagoon attacking it. Header away. He commits a foul, pursuing it. There will be a free kick given to one Knoxville. Frustrations from Balagoon, but Gabriel Claudio got there in the way. Put his head to it. If Balogun didn't foul him, would have been a potential for a corner kick, but Claudio, fearless, going for it. Burns his side. 
bit more reprieve. It will also allow Kyle McDowell to make his entrance into the match. We're coming on for Rudy Castro. He was booked up front. Put a big shift in defensively, trying to just hold the ball up. See things out in the defender coming off for him. It shows you what Knoxville are prepared to do, try and shut things down. First appearance for McDowell since July 29th against Central Valley Fuego. We had a 17 minute appearance off the bench, not in the squad for the last two weeks. Had an illness he was going through. So positive to have him back available for selection, back on the bench. And he'll be back at the 11. He'll hope that his contribution here can be, again, in the pursuit of a victory, as it was against Central Valley Fuego. That one was on the road, and it was Rudy Castro, the man who came off for him, who scored the winner from the penalty spot in the 92nd minute. Tariq Muhammad plays it to Brown. Trying to fight for it, but Gabriel Claudio got a foot in. Cleared away. Keegan is now the man shifted up front. Tasked with the responsibility of pressing, holding up play. Fox, Seah Gonzalez. Brown, nice bit of footwork. Nico Brown from distance. Goes over everything. He's got that X factor. Seven goals on the year. He's capable of moments like that. That one, though, just got under it a little. Kept alive by Tate Robertson. Launched forward, out of play. Fox. Works to Robertson. Back to Fox. Smart. Say Gonzalez. Lots of green jerseys in the box for Muhammad to pick out. Whips it in. Headed away. Controlled down. Brilliant pass forward if he can get there. Kelly will get there. Up against Muhammad now. Getting speed. Kelly still alive, squaring it. And Amal Knight gets to it, but what a run from the goal scorer. Kelly streaking forward on the right-hand side, which is hopeful for some support. And I'll have to make the difficult effort of tracking back now. We'll show it to you again if we get the opportunity, but Lexington going to try and keep it alive and render it null and void. Smart to Muhammad. Looks up, whips one in, goes out of play. We can see it again is not for nothing. Kelly just driving forward, burns time, stretches the field. Just incredible speed and power to keep it alive. And it was difficult. You can see Jake Keegan trying to keep up with him. And his, his speed almost took all of his teammates out of the play, especially down a man. Don't want to stretch numbers too much, but the, the captain on the field... Angelo Kelly Rosales trying to help see this one out. He's currently the match winner with a brilliant right-footed effort. Foul committed. Or we throw in, rather. Throw in for Knoxville. McDowell's there.
into the final 10 minutes now. Not the second half that Sam Stockley and Lexington would have wanted to see, but exactly what Mark McKeever and Juan Knoxville were hoping to cook up. Got a goal in a bit of a transition moment. Kelly didn't have numbers around him, but had a magnificent individual effort. It's Fox looking at his options. Robertson, he'll go back. Don Smart. Every outfield player for both teams deep in the attacking half. Drake Muhammad past Kelly. Top of the box. Nico Brown, low shot saved by Lewis. Close to him, but he had to be clean. Balagoon was on hand if he spilled it. Let's check it out again. Just nice bit of footwork by Muhammad, who's been a constant threat on the right-hand side. Nico Brown is shot low, powerful, venomous into the hands of Sean Lewis. Back with Lexington. It's Machel. Robertson. Smart. He can switch play. Nico Brown is there. Brilliant first touch. Brings it under control. Clips went in and Lewis. He's wise to it. High fives between Chrysler and Fernandez. You know that they're eight minutes in stoppage time away from moving themselves one point off of Greenville. They've got eight matches left to play. One Knox will do after this one. Nine for Lexington. Well, should they win, they'll be at 31 points. Greenville will be at 30, 32, I should say. They have three matches in hand, Greenville do, so it's not a, not a shoe and not an easy task. That went just off. Next is preparing a very attacking sub. We see Jalen James is ready to come on. Eric Seja Gonzalez, who we're hearing, is going to come off for him. As you see, just confirmation on the board. It's a center back off for a guy who can play as a more attacking forward option. Might see Don Smart drop into the center of defense, but they're just tossing numbers forward. Lexington are in options. See, he's got a little bit of paper on his hand. Got to try and shift the shape around. Is it over to Captain Don Smart? They're up a man, but it doesn't make the task easy against a team as defensively sound as one Knoxville. Claudio tosses it in. Keegan is touch and turn. Takes it out of play. For Knoxville, though, with these three points, should they get them, it'll put massive pressure on Greenville, who are the team that everybody, both Knoxville, South Georgia, Richmond, are looking at, hoping that they'll drop some points and open up a relatively accessible path to that sixth spot into the playoffs. It's Nico Brown. Lofted in, headed away. You can see Jalen James was on hand, playing as a right winger. Robertson feeling the effects of that one a little bit. Referee waving it, saying no foul. Mitchell. Kind of playing as a one center back system, it appears right now, with deeper line center mids in Smart and Mitchell. Muhammad clipping it to Smart. At the feet of James. Robertson's with him. Pass just off, though. The sub not linking up properly. Ironic applause from the home crowd. Happy that they conceded possession. But you can see another sub being prepared for the hosts. Knoxville, Matthew Vowinkle going to come on for Jake Keegan. Again, a substitution trying to help keep the press going up high. And Keegan played a more defensive role in this one. It will be only two goals in three barrel brawl matches in 2023. But... Up to settle for a winner and an equalizer in the prior two and a defensively solid effort to, as he comes off the pitch, a clean sheet as things stand. Vowinkle immediately in the action. Smart hooks it clear. Bit of miscommunication between Villalobos and McDowell. Allows it to go out for a throw. Here's Tariq Muhammad. Less than five minutes of regulation to go. Over everybody. Foul committed. Again, 
and Balogu and the man offending there. Might be making a word to, to Sean Lewis about being quick with his restarts. But the end is in sight for Knoxville. Bragging rights, a full-size whiskey barrel, a bottle of bourbon from a distiller in Lexington is promising. So high boot from Kim. Yellow card produced. It'll be Knoxville are keeping their composure about them as a foul was committed by Soso -So Kim. People will draw parallels to the red card for Kalik Stro, but it appeared to be lower where his foot was. Frustration for Knoxville, they're saying similar. And yeah, you can see that he was leaning forward. Definitely a foul. Yellow card seems appropriate. You can see Angelo Kelly just getting in with his players saying there's no reason to, to protest the decision any further. He got the foul, he got the yellow card. Wasn't as high as the Calixto high boot that led to his red card. That has Knoxville with 10. But the argument certainly is there to be made based on prior precedent. Well, it's a precedent. You might be able to hear just the, the yells of red card by fans in at Regal Soccer Stadium. A caution has been issued by the referee to the Lexington SC's number 11, Sewin Kim, in the 86th minute. Villalobos back to his feet. Hope that he can continue on in his best form as he possibly can. We're a few minutes away from stoppage time. We've got a goal. Got a few, few pauses in this one. Intrigued to see how much we will actually get added on. Winkle chests it down. McDowell, subs linking up. He'll keep it in play. Amal Knight, he'll roll it in for Muhammad. into the box. Knocked down by Villalobos. Claudio is there. Tries to scrape it clear. Is that still in play? It is. Curled into the box. Passed everybody though. Well defended again by Knoxville. It's out for a goal kick. Sean Lewis going to dig deep into the bag of tricks. He's not been booked yet. Might recognize that he's got that yellow card still in the bank if he wants to really eke some time off the clock if they need it. Not the prettiest aspect of the game as the referee blows his whistle to slightly hurry things up. But Knoxville will be happy even if it takes a bit of dark arts to try and see this one out. Foul committed. Tug in the back by Fox on Bo Winkle. Free kick for Knoxville. More time for them to eke off the clock. Have to say one of the most defensively impressive performances. Could be commentators curse should anything happen in the final moments, but through this moment, Knoxville superb defensively. Hasn't been a bad day from Lexington by any stretch of the imagination. As Von Winkle is going to do some brilliant hold-up play in the corner, trying to keep it with some time burning off. Robertson, they lose out. Von Winkle, low pass. Kelly got a shot. He goes down and took a deflection. Goes out for a corner kick. They're appealing. They don't believe that it was a corner kick, but it's going to allow Knoxville more time to kill off the clock it was a last ditch tackle on Angelo Kelly who was in a great spot it broke awkwardly for Lexington and nearly nearly the moment that saw off the win the Lexington have been stifled in their attacks all throughout the contest five minutes of added time at the end of this one. It'll be an agonizing five minutes for Knoxville. Waldeck 
making the appeal that they're not 10 yards away, and then they will keep it in play now. Vowinkle fighting for it. It'll set up for Waldeck. His back heel just off. He was in an offside position should he have collected it anyways. And ML Knight can get Lexington going. You imagine there's one opportunity left in this one. The fourth official has indicated five minutes of stoppage time for the second half. Nerves throughout. Another five minutes away from a vital rivalry three points. Playoff pushing three points. Muhammad. will invite Fox to step forward. He's got Smart to his left. Don Smart. Robertson, he'll be pressed. Clever touch. Tate Robertson keeps it alive. Intercepted though. Waldeck. Plays it into the channel. Awkward. Fox going to chase it down. Back to the keeper. Knight. He may range forward should they get a set piece. We're nearing that time of the match. Muhammad. Headed away. Fox. Machel, Tariq Muhammad, Kelly has to step out to press. Muhammad clips it up, headed away. McDowell puts his foot through it, knocks it clear. Knight, well off his line. It'll be an 11th outfield player. They're trying to get the equalizer against 10. They conceded against 10. They would hate to leave this rivalry match. Falling shorthanded. Whipped forward, headed away, sits up for Kim. His shot is scuffed wide, untouched by Knoxville. More time for them to preciously see off the clock. Smart to the left-hand side. Intercepted, though, by Kelly. If he gets there first, they've got numbers. He pokes it away. Will he go for goal? Knight off his line as well. Slide tackle, vital intervention. Knocks it out. And that'll answer the question for Angelo Kelly. He knows that while he can't get the second, the insurance goal, he'll kill off a lot of time. He'll force Lexington back. Vital, though. Amal Knight keeps his team in the conversation for a point on the road. Tossed in for Vowinkle. James fighting for it. Kelly will get there. Did he go down? Was he fouled? Referee says it went out. Last touch by Lexington. Just over a minute. Kelly tosses it in. It's intercepted though by Smart. Excuse me, Smart has it now. He'll play it to Robertson. Can they launch one last attack? Can they have one last defense? Intercepted, though. Pass under hit. McDowell got there first. Waldeck on the overlap. He'll play it. It's a bit of a poor pass. Robertson can pass to Fox. Have Knoxville offered them one last lifeline. Smart. Tariq Muhammad. Got James with him. He'll go shorter to Smart. It's Robertson. He'll clip it forward. Balagoon's in the area. Attacking with a header. It's knotted away by Claudio. Will go out of play. Slide tackle by Balagoon. Knocks down Kelly. Who wins his side a throw. He's feeling the effects of that one. He has put everything on the line in this one. This is a vintage Angelo Kelly performance. The goal, the tackling, just the raw determination. Right now, just hoping to see things out. We've had the minimum of five. The referee can add more to his discretion based on any time wasting or time the ball did not spend on the pitch during those five minimum added on. So we'll see 
perhaps 20, 30, 40 more, more seconds in this one. But again, all eyes on Christian Campo Hernandez. Maxwell's given it all. They've been down a man for over 50 minutes. Launched in. That is it. The barrel brawl goes the way of Knoxville. Down to 10, doesn't matter. They get the three points at home and at Regal Soccer Stadium. They triumph over Lexington for a second time in 2023. Just a mightily impressive performance. Grit determination from Knoxville. And win the rivalry match. A vital one, a vital one heading their way. Win number eight. They're one point off the playoff spots. One Knoxville, one Lexington, nil. We had a great full 90. We'll show you everything, the highlights and the stats. Back in a moment, the final though. One Knoxville, one Lexington Sporting Club, nil. professional athletes but if your goal is to finish your degree we can help come to a university that puts your goals first Bellevue University your partner in finishing goals First iteration of the Barrel Brawl 2023 heads the way of Knoxville. A 1-0 win sees them win the season series with two wins and a draw in the three meetings between one Knoxville and Lexington Sporting Club. 1-0, the clean sheet for Sean Lewis between the sticks. Mightily impressive. Let's show you the highlights and how they did it after an enthralling full 90 between these two sides. We'll see Derek Waldeck whipping this one in. One of the more interesting opportunities in the first 45 minutes. It had to be palmed away by Amal Knight, keeping that one out of his own net, doing well to nod that one out of being in his own net off that free kick. We'll see, though, the biggest moment possibly in the match early on in that first half, as they were getting into the dying moments of it, was a massive ball out wide. Owen Green whips it out. Duke Leakstro puts his foot up a bit high, catches the chest of Tariq Muhammad and receives a red card. Kalikstro sent off. It would not matter though. Second half action now, Angelo Kelly, a brilliant right-footed finish. Moment of magic from the Honduran. Puts that one in the top right corner. Gives them the one mil lead. They're down to 10, but it's a bit of footwork, a bit of creativity, and just nice shape on that shot was enough for Kelly to give them the one nil lead. Lexington, we're gonna try and toss everything they had at this one, trying to bring it back in. Robertson is gonna whip this one into the box. Knocked down, not a great opportunity for Balagoon, but it was awkward. Could have been poked home, which is one of those days for Lexington, despite being up a man, could not find a way past Sean Lewis in goal, making three saves in the day. Again, a massive performance between the sticks from him. We'll see further. This one, one of the more impressive shots by Nico Brown. Low, not easy to deal with, but made it look very simple. Sean Lewis did on the shot through a crowd from Nico Brown. There were 10 shots for Lexington, three on target, and they handled it defensively well throughout. Those full-time stats brought to you by CGI. 63% possession, 10 shots, three on target for the visitors, but they were kept out by the 10-man defensive effort of one Knoxville. And the goal from Angelo Calliot sees them move themselves one point away from the playoff spots. 
a thoroughly entertaining full 90 between those two teams in the third round of the Barrel Brawl of 2023. Those two teams just giving us an absolute treat. Both of them fighting to try and get these points late on in 2023. Well, it was a fantastic one, and Knox will hold the bragging rights. They'll get the full-size whiskey barrel and a bottle of bourbon, but the three points, the thing they'll value by far the most after this one. They head back home, take on Charlotte next time up on next Saturday, while Lexington will also head back, take on Richmond at home. Our final for our entire production crew, I've been Jack Edwards, delighted to present to you the Barrel Brawl, heading the way of Knoxville, one goal to nil, final from ESPN+. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League, League One, cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League, League One.